I forgot to mute my TV. The TV turned its volume back up since the sound bar got shut off. at your destination. Oh, that's the last one of this one. The trophy truck for you? And the 911 yes. GT3 RS for me. We'll be racing each other. See, if I win, I can tell the whole familia that I be the Horizon superstar. And if you win, well, we just won't tell anyone. I should mention, you all need to follow the dirt road and ignore Anna for this one. The university wants telemetry from different road surfaces. surfaces. So I'll take the asphalt. Ignore Anna, take the dirt road, got it. than we thought it would be, no? Muchas gracias, my friend. No, it wasn't. I have the telemetry from both vehicles. I'll get it over to the university. Right after I compare my acceleration profile with Rami and Ale's last races. <laughs> I'll tell them they have competition.
No parachute required. <coughs> Let's go over here. Yeah, I have a couple more. I hope you know some shortcuts. Yeah. See you uh, at the finish line. Don't make me wait for too long. What a race! So cute. The difference 40 years makes! Oh well, I mean... Still, the older cars are built... A little better. These newer ones are built from plastic, fiberglass, or cheap-ass metal. But you get luxury on the inside? Oh, that's so fancy. Back over here. This one. <clears throat> but 
But this one, no. But this one. Yep, already did. Okay. That's the old wolf. <laughs> no, no, that's an old truck. The wolf is waiting for us at the swamp. Haley asked us to clear some debris, and I've got just the car. But we need to get there first. Of course. Who do you think I am? The, times are started. the driver who destroyed a record-breaking amount of fences. Uh, that's uh, fair. Yeah. a few heart attacks. This car is too old for this kind of driving! Huh. What's up, Diggs? And now, let me introduce you to the Ford YouTube's. Lobo. This car is more your style. Oh, when you give me a Ford, now that's I'd rather have the other car, truck. It's a beast of a truck, though. We call it Lobo here. Marketing in this country is outstanding. Let's get to work. See all that Russian stuff? Clear it out. What? No! It's not just an excuse to throw the Lobo around. It is just an excuse to throw the Lobo around. In the 90s, Ford decided that they needed to rebrand the F-150 for the Mexican market. And the name Lobo just has a real ring to it. They started using the badge in 1997, and the rest is history. The Ford Lobo quickly became one of the most popular vehicles in the country. Lobo is still used for the modern Rangers, like the one based on the F-150 Raptor you're driving. But we don't just call it Lobo. No, no. We call it Lobo Raptor. So it's the same car? No. There are loads of differences. Like a dog and a wolf. Lobo only comes in XLT and with higher trim levels. The base version is still sold in Mexico as the F-150, but the Lobo is the Elite F-150.
actually the fire said always said I would go back to the Great, job's done, and the scratches will yeah, buff yeah, right yeah. out. Yeah, Thanks for the help. Now I just need to get my abuelo's old F-100 back to the garage. I've got 1,400 horses and I need I you to help it. with them. I think I know what this is. I'll be right over. All right, well, where is it at? I thought it would... right there. I found it. <coughs> Get my sprite. Or in other video game terms, sprunk. Diggs, if you're still in my uh, stuff, go ahead and follow if you haven't already. I... I stream, but only when the whenever I freaking can, but mostly on the weekends. Uh, this is not a stream. This is a recording for YouTube. But um, change car. I have a taxi around. All right. Okay, Wingnut. I have disabled head to head for you. I'm going to do one more after this, and that's it of the video. Hey there! So, look at this. 1,400 horses of electric Ford Mustang. Get in! Ooh. I wonder, actually. It does count. Oh, I could have been doing this the whole gosh damn time. Well, oh well. Let's take this down to the beach. Stick it in AWD if you it's like. Electric. There's some nice curbs up ahead. The electric Mustang looks good. Feels better than the gas ones. <laughs> this is 2021's EV of the year. And it was up against things like the Taycan and the e-tron and the Recharge. It set three Guinness World Records, and it's inspired by the beautiful original Mac 1. And I'm telling you all of this because the Mac E was built right here in Mexico at Cuautitlan Assembly. Whoa! Uh, what do you 
make it go around corners like that? I'm really asking. Calm down. I know you like to go fast. But I had a big breakfast. Cotitlan Assembly has been building cars since the 60s. Oh, and more than 2.2 million cars later, we're that sitting in an actual up, space huh? machine made here in Mexico. Quite a journey from Cougars and Thunderbirds and F-150s to this. This isn't just a prototype. Guautitlan Assembly does a range of options for the Mac E. A 68 kilowatt hour standard and an 88 kilowatt hour extended range version. It will give you over 300 miles of range on a single charge. The Performance GT version is the really wild one. Zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds. This one is uh, quite a bit faster. Honestly, when I first tried it, I had to go and sit in a quiet room for a bit. And I've flown airplanes in a storm. It's wild tech. You can switch from all-wheel drive to rear-wheel drive at the touch of a button. And when you get into tuning, you can basically tweak every one of the seven engines individually. It can make 1,400 horsepower and a ton of downforce at 160 miles per hour thanks to the Aero 2. So what you're saying is, huh. not bad for something that weighs more than an F-150 of yours. Yes. Hey, I have to give this back. <laughs> Be careful with it. Um, then you shouldn't have me behind the wheel if no one needs to be careful. Just saying. And there we go. Sunrise over the sea. Beautiful. But we're not done. There's one more thing to look at. I'll let you know as soon as I have uh, found it. Star. It's all good. Okay. Okay, I did already take a picture of that. This one will be epic. I found the Porsche Carrera. You know what that means? Racing? And what do you mean, found? <laughs> In a barn, of course. And of course it's racing. Come meet me at Guanajuato. Where is it at? Where is this? Made in Mexico stuff. Okay, I'm right there. 
I thought it would GPS me. Oh, probably because I have something else planned. Which isn't helping me anyway, because that's not even showing up either. I found it. It's in town. Spawn in the wrong spot. There. This beauty got her name from the Carrera Panamericana. The races don't run anymore, but who can blame us if we take it out one more time? Right? Let's see what this car can do. There's Jamin! Guess he wanted one uh, last race. Crap. Let's do this! <laughs> race had 132 competitors and everyone turned up amateurs to f1 drivers men women professionals anyone who had a car do you know anyone who participated aleja thinks papa fernando did but she thinks papa fernando did everything i know we used to go to the races with my grandfather ah que buenos recuerdos there was no speed limit before 2012 and you'd see cars doing 180 miles per hour. Not that I'd know anything about that. 2,178 miles of the Pan-American Highway run through Mexico. The race itself had nine stages and lasted five days. But the sheer distance wasn't the only challenge. Constant changes in the elevation from sea level to three kilometers up. The most challenging road race in the world. The winner of the very first Carrera Panamericana was Herschel McGriff, who drove an Oldsmobile 88 at an average speed of 88 miles per hour. The Porsche Carrera got its name Man. thanks to Hans Hermann, who won the small sports oh. cars category in 1954. He drove the Porsche 550 Spider and came third overall. He was sick before the race and his tires came off at the start. He really pulled through against the odds. 
Porsche had six cars competing in 1954, and all of them made it through the end. A lot of others didn't, let me tell you. Enjoying yourself, are you? Yeah, I kinda had a feeling you were. 1954 was the last year the original Carrera Panamericana took place. But it gave us the most famous Porsche model, the Carrera you're driving right now. The Carrera RS 2.7 was the first production street racing 911. It was built on the 911S 2.4, the fastest Porsche you could buy at the time, and a popular choice in the later Carrera Panamericana races. The race was revived in 1988 and ran to 2016, staying true to the original races with high-speed road stages. The routes for the race were carefully selected every year by planning committee and local government to ensure they were race-worthy and that they can be closed up for two hours. You could almost say they've been preparing for the festival for a very long time. This is Jamie Sexton. Right. It's been fun, my friend. Take care. Looking forward to seeing what you can do out there. Have fun now, yeah? Great race. Almost like we did a little Panamericana with a friend. Anyways, hope you had fun with this little stroll through cars hechos in Mexico. It was great. And let me know if you uh, find any other cars like that. Sweet. All right. Hey, an achievement. Alright, um, that's it guys. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. Peace out everybody.